The Trump administration's got a leak problem. Time and again over the last 10 months, leaks from inside the White House have seemingly consumed the administration, casting a cloud over the West Wing. Well, today it apparently reached a breaking point. The White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, made a surprise appearance at today's press briefing. Now, this is rare. It is rare for a Chief of Staff to attend a briefing this way, but he was on an important mission to deliver a message on behalf of and to an audience of one, President Trump. Following weeks of media reports speculating that he's quitting and that he's frustrated in his job, John Kelly tried to change the narrative. Although I read it all the time, uh, pretty consistently, I, I'm not quitting today. Uh, I, I don't believe, and I just talked to the president, I don't think I'm being fired today. Um, and uh, I'm not so frustrated in this job that uh, I'm thinking of leaving. I would tell you, this is the hardest job I've ever had. Uh, this is, in my view, the most important job I ever had. Uh, I would offer, though, it is not the best job I ever had. Best job I ever had, as I've said many times, is when I was an enlisted Marine sergeant infantryman. Did you catch that? <laughs> John Kelly said his work in a war zone was easier than working in the White House. So it may not be surprising that Kelly didn't really issue a strong denial that he could be leaving the White House soon. And that was the theme of John Kelly's appearance, the non-denial denial. Over the last few days, reports about internal strife and tension in the White House have run rampant. The Washington Post reported that during discussions about the Iran deal, President Trump threw a fit when Secretaries Tillerson and Mattis tried to defend the agreement. The LA Times says the president has engaged in shouting matches with John Kelly. And as Lawrence reported last night, Vanity Fair spoke to several people close to the president who described him as, quote, unstable and unraveling. But when John Kelly tried clearing the air today, he actually conceded that Trump is frustrated. It is astounding to me how much is misrep misreported. I will, I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you are operating off of contacts, leaks, whatever you call them. Um, but I, I would just offer to you the advice I'd say, uh, you know, maybe develop some better sources. The uh, Congress has been frustrating uh, to him. I would say his great frustration is the process that he now finds himself clear that the negative stories are getting to the president. You can see Trump's frustration in his attack on NBC News after its report that the president, quote, wanted what amounted to a nearly tenfold increase in the U.S. nuclear arsenal. Just this evening, the president tweeted again at NBC News. John Kelly had the chance to say that NBC News' reporting was wrong. Here's what he said. In spite of what uh, someone reported the other day about President uh, and I don't think he'd mind my, my sharing this, uh, what he's said to me many, many times and to the, to, to the group oftentimes. I hear him most say about nuclear weapons that wouldn't be great if we could get rid of them all uh, as opposed to we need 10 times more. Okay, that wasn't really a denial. John Kelly had the chance to say that Senator Bob Corker's frank assessments of Donald Trump, including the notion that the Trump White House is an adult daycare, were wrong. Here's what he had to say. When I read about things that are uh, what I would perceive to be unfair or critical, uh, unnecessarily critical, I will call members of Congress. Oftentimes, members of Congress that I talk to will say, geez, I didn't realize it came out that way, I'm sorry, or no, I, I meant it. Uh, but it was kind of a grown-up uh, comment, and, and so I'll take that to the president and say, but then there's others that uh, are, uh, as the president would say, grandstanding. I, I'm not saying uh, Senator Corker's that way. I'm just saying that some people grandstand and, and kind of enjoy the uh, and enjoy the attention. Do you notice a pattern there? John Kelly was supposed to set the record straight for the administration, hit the reset button. Instead, he talked around most of those stories without actually denying any of them. So what happens when one of your chief defenders 
doesn't actually come to your defense. Joining us now are Tim O'Brien, executive editor of Bloomberg View and author of Trump Nation, The Art of Being the Donald. He's also an MSNBC contributor. Max Boot is a senior fellow for National Security Studies at the Council on Foreign Relations. He's also a former foreign policy advisor for McCain, Romney, and Rubio. And Neera Tandon is the president of the Center for American Progress. Thanks to all of you for being here. Max, let me start with you. What do you make of this? I, I often wonder when we get these surprise briefings uh, from somebody who doesn't normally do the briefing and it's supposed to have a particular effect and it ends up uh, often having the opposite effect. Well exactly I mean I think this is a good messenger and John <laughs> Kelly certainly knows how to talk to the press much more adroitly than the average White House press secretary or Rex Tillerson last week but the message is not credible. I mean, if you're having to call a press conference to deny that you're leaving the administration and that the president is unstable, that's kind of like Richard Nixon calling a press conference to say, I am not a crook. The very fact that you're denying it seems to confirm it. And we see the confirmation before our eyes. I mean, remember, let's not forget, yesterday, the president of the United States was saying that it's crazy that a news outlet can write whatever that it wants to say. Right. He is attacking the First Amendment. And today he's attacking the people of Puerto Rico who are still 86% of them have no electricity. This is not normal. That lends a lot of credence to these stories that yes, he is spinning out of control, that he is not being handled by his handlers like John Kelly. And as you point out, nothing that John Kelly said today actually rebuts that conclusion. But it was interesting, Nira, in that what it seemed to do was indicate that the, the thing that so many people believe, the idea that John Kelly is there to control him, may not be true. In fact, the L.A. Times quotes a person close to the White House uh, as saying that, quote, every time it says on MSNBC or CNN, which you know he watches, this is the adult, thank God they stopped him, it all gets to him. Absolutely. I mean, what's what's odd about the whole situation we're in is if you really step back, uh, is there a big difference in the White House functionality between John Kelly and Reince Priebus? I mean, the president still has crazy tweets. I think the president, I think Donald Trump really does react to these stories saying he's unraveling. But the best way to demonstrate he's not unraveling is to stop insane tweets attacking varieties of Americans between 6 and 7 a.m. I mean, the evidence of unraveling is what he does himself, who he attacks, how he attacks people all the time, pitting group people against each other in an incredibly unpresidential way. And so I think the, the issue for John Kelly is like he's in this maelstrom with the president and he obviously didn't deny really anything today, he didn't even really criticize Corker, Senator Corker and his criticisms. But the, the big issue is that no one is controlling the president. That's what we should be really worried about. This White House is spinning out of control. It's not what John Kelly says, it's what the president does every single day to make Americans feel unsure about you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. Tim, uh, there's new reporting tonight from uh, Michael Gerson in the Washington Post. Uh, let me just read you a bit of what it says. It is no longer possible to safely ignore the leaked cries for help coming from <laughs> within the administration. They reveal a president raging against enemies, obsessed by slights, deeply uninformed and incurious, unable to focus, and subject to destructive whims. A main task of the chief of staff seems to be to shield him from dinner guests and telephone calls that might set him off on a foolish or dangerous tangent. You understand Donald Trump and his personality. Uh, there's nothing that's happening here that doesn't fit with what you've written about the president. I mean, has, have, have we had a moment where someone from within the White House, whether it was Sean Spicer, Reince Priebus, uh, Rex Tillerson, and now John Kelly have come out and it, and it doesn't smack of a hostage video where, where they're being put up to say something that I don't think they would voluntarily go out and say. It's essentially burnishing the president's credibility and his reputation. And even in the midst of doing that, that you see contradictions. Uh, Kelly contradicted the president on what's going to be done in Puerto Rico. Essentially, Trump did another one of his morning tweets in which he he said he was essentially going to abandon the island after a certain period of time. It's difficult and expensive to rescue people. 
Um, and Kelly said during the press conference, we're not going to do that. We're going to stand by the people of Puerto Rico as long as they need us. And Trump said, this is the best job that, that John Kelly's ever had. And, and John Kelly said, John Kelly's not said really sorry, it's not. It's challenging. It, it's a little bit crazy, la, la, la. But he did not say it's the best job I've ever had. And the reality is this isn't adult daycare. It's just daycare. <laughs> because you have a president who is, is a seven-year-old grown old. And he hasn't built a strong team. And, and I think there's this constant revisiting the press of when will he become presidential? Has he finally become presidential? Is this a pivot? And who can manage him? Right. And this, at this stage, these are unhealthy and unsophisticated ways to be managing uh, the most powerful office in the world. You know, uh, Max, uh, Mitch Mulvaney, uh, Mick Mulvaney was on uh, with Chuck Todd this week on Meet the Press, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but when asked about the chaos, or however you want to uh, describe what some think uh, is going on in the White House, he said, I am there every day. I don't see any disorganization. I don't see any chaos. At some point, uh, th th this is a situation of the emperor having no clothes. We keep hearing people, uh, as, as Tim says, coming out uh, as if in a hostage video and telling you that the stuff that you can see is going on through the resignations that come with relative frequency uh, and the turmoil that always ends up being true after it's first leaked. Uh, at some point, it attacks the, it, it affects the credibility of the White House simply because they keep denying that there's actually chaos. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, President Trump has no credibility by this point, given the frequency with which he lies. And the people who are defending him are having their own credibility be shredded simply by association with him. I mean, this is a very dangerous and, and depressing situation where, I mean, he's finally been called out by his own Secretary of State, who called him a moron, by a leading Republican senator who has said that he is running adult daycare and that he is possibly leading us to World War III. And I really have not seen a lot of pushback from anybody on the Republican side or even among the, the White House staff because people basically know this is true. This is the obvious truths that people on the Republican Party are, are generally too afraid to acknowledge. And, you know, most of the Republicans in, uh, in Washington are too pusillanimous to say what, what Tillerson or, or Corker are saying, but they know it's true. And what really makes the situation dangerous is that everybody is basically realizes you know, what jeopardy we're in with a president who could not be trusted with a nuclear arsenal, who could not be trusted to discharge the duties of his office, but they're not willing to do anything and, and yet, about it. Max, they're, to your area yeah. of specialty in foreign policy, the two most serious issues on the table right now both involve nuclear, uh, North Korea, and now we are expecting tomorrow a decertification or an announcement uh, toward the decertification of the Iran deal. Uh, we, we've actually um, inflamed two areas that, that are the most serious from a national security perspective. And President Trump's aides and handlers understand that what he's doing makes no sense. I mean, you heard that in the way that John Kelly talked today about we have to give diplomacy a chance with North Korea. He doesn't call the dictator of North Korea a little rocket man. He doesn't issue these empty, blustery threats that raise the risk of a nuclear war. And likewise, it's been widely reported that President Trump's national security team thinks that he should certify the Iranian nuclear deal because the evidence is that the Iranians are in compliance, but Trump won't do that. And so they're trying to come up with some kind of third way where you decertify but don't really pull out. So you basically satisfy the president but don't unravel the deal, which is, you know, basically too smart by half. But this is how the guardians of our national security are trying to deal with the number one threat to our security, which is the commander in chief. The man in the Oval Office is actually now the greatest threat that we as a country face. And thank goodness people like John Kelly and Mattis and McMaster are there to rein him in. But there's a limit to what they can do, because at the end of the day, this guy is the boss. But near it, we only have a handful of Republicans who have actually come out like Corker, like Jeff Flake. Fundamentally, most Republicans, certainly most influential Republicans elected, are not doing anything about this. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I mean, I agree with Max. I don't actually know how these Republicans sleep at night at this point. I mean, we're at a moment where we have... Uh, the pre Donald Trump is elevating challenges with North Korea. You have Bob Corker saying he's 
rhetoric is heading us towards World War III. He's at a moment where it's not enough that we have a nuclear North Korea. He's basically trying to do what he can to get a nuclear Iran. I mean, I don't know why anyone thinks that Donald Trump is well equipped to do, deal with two destabilizing nuclear powers, one in the Middle East and one in Asia, not just one. And the fact that you have to basically choose not to run again in order to say something about the president and his right. dysfunction is is a, is a is a terrible black mark and i would just say not for today or for tomorrow but in history how these people will be judged will be incredibly harsh everybody knows what's going on and they're just not willing to say it because of politics tim final point to you uh, is there anything that donald trump is going to do in other words he does seem to play the same card over and over again <laughs> stuff that is good for his base that uh they will respect because he is a tough guy uh that flies in the face of conventional wisdom and uh, as we've seen increasingly in the face of honesty but i, I would think at some point point his base will want more than donald acting like it's high noon all the time. I think there should be results. One of the great losses and expenses of this kind of behavior is that he hasn't gotten any significant legislation passed. And I think today when he walked away, not having yet signed the executive order, was very metaphorical. He, he loved the stage. He loved the moment. He forgets to sign the bill. And, um, and this is the story of this administration. And I think he's not delivering yet on some important points that he promised to his base. And that clock is ticking. And this game, I think, of, of Trump playing everything either through self-aggrandizement or self-preservation, which are his two motivating forces, is getting increasingly old. It's beyond old. It's stale now. All right. Tim, thanks very much for that. Thank you. Tim, Max Boot, uh, thanks to both of you. Nira, stick around. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.